Well, hello and good evening and welcome to this special presentation. Sydney Melbourne Touring has just been hosting gold medal and some fantastic agents who buy through gold medal on a Famil all the way from Melbourne up to Sydney. And um, with me at the moment is Louisa. Louisa, it's been a blast, hasn't it? Oh my God, it's been so much fun. It's just been the best trip ever. It's so, so good. So tell me how this Famil came about. Okay, so we had this opportunity to bring uh, some amazing agents over to Australia with the help of Etihad Airways and also Australia Tourism. And it was a chance for our top selling agents to win their place by selling Australia and then hopefully taking all their knowledge back home to the UK and selling some more. So what a great opportunity. Absolutely. Top selling agents now selling a top selling product. So that's great. We'll go through what they've done in just a moment. Um, but I also should make mention that we're currently sitting here at the Hyatt Regency Club at the uh, Hyatt Regency in Sydney. What an awesome hotel. Oh, it's absolutely been amazing. Um, and as I say, we're in the Regency Club, which is their club lounge, and we've been treated so, so well so far, and I can only see it getting better. Our rooms are amazing, the hotel is amazing, it's on an ideal spot on Darling Harbour. It's just, yeah, great. It's been absolutely brilliant. And we basically started in Melbourne, worked our way up to Sydney. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk with the agents. And would you like to introduce our first group of agents we're going to talk to? Okay, so over here we've got the delightful Debbie. We've also got Angela, Bo and Brody. Um, our top selling agents, so. Yeah, well welcome, it's great to have you here. So we're going to go back to where we very first started. So having a look at my little uh, running sheet here, we started in Melbourne. And I guess the first thing about Melbourne is the trams and the transport and how easy it is to get around that fabulous city. How did you find that? Very easy, fantastic. Um, it's, it's a compact city anyway, so you hop on, on and off the trams as you go along and they're free. They take you anywhere that you want to go and uh, perfect, it's worked out very well. And of course it's great for walking as well, so we did everything. It's really well, it's really good the way that it's marked out with the tram network in Melbourne because you've got that green zone as you said and it's uh, it's free. Angela, did you find the trams good? Oh, it was excellent. It was a brilliant way because we went to the Melbourne Star and we just got on the tram to get there so it was a brilliant way to get there So and nice to just get an idea of what the city's like as you go through all the different ways and everything like that. So Superb. Wonderful. That is a great yeah. segue yeah. into our next segment which is actually the Melbourne Star because you're right, we did go to the Melbourne yeah. Star and we had an absolute ball there. It's such a great product. How would you describe that, David? Oh, oh, Angela? Absolutely brilliant. It's just, it's just a giant observation wheel. You get these brilliant views, 360 degree views all around, and that you just fly on your flight and everything like that. So it's absolutely wonderful. So it starts off really nicely. You can go and have sort of like a sparkling drink as you get on board, beer or anything that you want. And that's just a wonderful way, especially if it's a celebration, special occasion, anything like that. What could be nicer? Rotating around, everything like that. Lovely. The views are amazing. Really, really good. We had those lovely canapes as oh, well. Oh, fantastic. Oh, we like the canapes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we love the canapes. And the lovely Nola, of course. Definitely. Well. Nola was great, wasn't yeah. she? She was she so was. informative yeah. about all of the different sites that we could see. And we had such fantastic views that day, didn't we? Yeah. They really were amazing. We could see all around. and some of the places that we were going to be going to as well, so it was, yeah, great experience. They certainly don't call it the world's most livable city for nothing. And then from that lookout point around the Docklands area, we then moved to the other side of the city and we went up 88 storeys high to Eureka Sky Deck. How did you find that experience? <laughs> Well, I'm scared of heights, so uh, it was terrifying to begin with, but you know, when you're up there five or ten minutes, it's, you know, you kind of get used to it, and of course we went into the edge. The edge, yeah. To the edge. And what that's like, glass opaque on the outside as you go in, absolutely brilliant. I don't know what you, everyone else thought of that. So, and as they you go into the box yeah. and as they slide yes, you out. Yes, so <gasps> then it starts and then, and then you're just left with glass. <laughs> 88 and 88 cool. stories yeah. worth of a drop and an amazing view. Absolutely amazing. And I know there was quite a few people that conquered their fears that day, definitely. Yes. <laughs> and I was one of them. So Absolutely. <laughs> And, and great views because you can see the um, you can see the Rod Laver Centre, you can see the MCG, and yes, yeah, awesome, awesome experience. Yeah, definitely. And even and Brody as well, you found it amazing. You even yeah. shuffled out, didn't you? You gained, <laughs> you gained your glass legs, and there you went. <laughs> 
Brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely impressive for sure. That's fabulous. And of course, the next thing we did was the deck restaurant. How did you find Melbourne's food and wine? Oh, amazing. We yeah, really enjoyed that yeah, night, didn't we? It was, and the views were absolutely lovely. You could just sit there, and we were lucky to be there when it was sunset. So that was so beautiful just to look out and take in the whole atmosphere. And you just can't feel, describe that atmosphere. It was so relaxing and so much going on. Yeah, really special evening. Yeah, and they really looked nice. after us with blankets and yeah. heaters outside. Yeah. So, yeah, we had an amazing time, amazing time. Certainly is yeah. a fabulous city. So thanks very much oh. for that insight. So that's all the information on the city of Melbourne, which is certainly the world's most livable city. Next we go down to Phillip Island, but before we do that, Louisa, we've got a change on our presentation oh, panel. Oh, we have indeed. So we've got Bo and Brody up in the front seats, and then we've got Karen and Nick from Tourism Victoria here. So thank you very much for joining us in our hot seats. <laughs> Fantastic. Now the first thing we did when we got to Phillip Island is a flight with Phillip Island helicopters. How did you find that? It was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I was really nervous, obviously, at the beginning, um, but it was so smooth and you know, the views that you saw from it were just incredible. Yeah, yeah the views were amazing. We got really good fit photos, the weather was really kind to us, so it was really yeah. clear skies, the waters looked beautiful, like greeny blue. It was so many different that. colours along that yeah. coastline, wasn't it, along really the beaches. Picture, yeah with the waves crashing against the beaches yeah. and all of the, you could see so much of the life, the That's sea life it. down below as well. Yeah, you? yeah, a whole overview of how pretty the actual yeah. place is. Definitely. I just, I just <laughs> love that feeling when the helicopter first goes off the ground and when it turns around, then it just starts to go lean yeah. forward and it starts to take off and it's, like you say, it's just yeah. so smooth and, yeah. and the views are phenomenal. And it was your first experience as well in a helicopter, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So, you know, to have that experience in such a magical yeah. place, yeah. you yeah. definitely do it again. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> and right throughout Victoria, there's so many great locations where you can do helicopter flights, but it's yeah. fantastic to have that service on Phillip Island, because Phillip Island is quite a small island, and, and once you get up there, you can see quite a lot of the island from that location. Yeah. Okay, so from there, we did go to the other side of the island, mm -hmm. and we went to the Nobbies and did a bit of, bit of a walk around the boardwalks and so forth. Yeah. How did you find that? Again, fantastic. Lovely. We loved seeing the little penguin houses. <laughs> Adorable. Did you see the penguins? Yes, yes. <laughs> I saw them asleep. Hundreds? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Incredible to see them all come out the same. In the natural. You, you look and bought them and then suddenly there's just like a massive group of all white bellies walking towards <laughs> you. Well, that was on Penguin Parade, wasn't yeah. it? When we when we saw those, and then when we saw them during the daytime in their in their boxes that were that were made for them. Yeah. So the ones that were we were lucky because mm -hmm. we were here when they were molting. Yeah. So the the fatter ones. Yeah. The, they were all sitting <laughs> in there just yeah. chilling out. Yeah. yeah, definitely really cool. Okay, so then when we left the Nobby's Boardwalk, we went into the Nobby's building yeah. and we went down to Antarctic Journeys. Yes. Now, what we, did you think of that? Loved in yeah. there. <laughs> you guys had a the way of time in there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. The Antarctic screen was fantastic. <laughs> Stay there for hours. Didn't want to yeah. <laughs> with all the penguins and the sea lions yeah, and yeah. the whales. What about the chill zone? Did you like the chill zone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really, really good experience. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Reminds us of at home. Yeah. <laughs> And all of that footage, like you're talking about, you know, on those on those big screens, and the soundtrack that goes with it, yeah. you know, just so cool. I can spend hours in there and just just watch every screen yeah, you know, right through from from go to go. What about the little bit with the sorry, the little bit with the augmented reality and the little penguins jumping up in yeah, front of you? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> you you girls spent so long there. Never experienced anything like that before. It was so good. The kids were loving it, weren't they? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that was just you guys yeah. and me. <laughs> So really, we covered all of Phillip Island because we started on one side, then we went right across to the Nobbies, then we went to the northern part of Phillip Island in a town called Cowes, and we went on a cruise with Wildlife Coast Cruisers, so instead of seeing seal rocks two kilometres away, we went right beside them. How did yeah. you find that? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but it I was can't believe how many there actually yes. was. Like so how close, close yeah. it is, close, how close you can get. Yeah. 
and, and how, the, how playful they are. They were really, really playful. Themselves they themselves they, they literally yes. wanted to come and see yes. us yeah. and play with the yeah. boat and play with. It was like you, you felt like you just wanted to throw a ball. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Jump in with them. <laughs> Definitely. And of course, Wildlife Coast Cruises is fully licensed, and I noticed a couple of the girls found the bar pretty quick. I think we've got some shots of that too. <laughs> like this magnetic attraction you know oh there's a bar on board we'll have a glass of wine as well. yeah. absolutely fabulous so from there we went back and uh, freshened up at the accommodation then we had dinner at rusty waters which is like a local brewery on the island yeah. again how was the food and wine yeah lovely well the food and the beer yeah anybody had yeah well we didn't try beer but it looked yeah. amazing <laughs> the beer is good I'll, I'll judge the beer yeah. 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 Yeah, you got cattle of all different types of beers and stuff that they brew there, and it was, uh, yeah, it was delicious. So. The shipwreck, yeah. the koala, exactly, yeah. Yeah. something or other. <laughs> yeah. All related it's to different environments. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Awesome. And then in the evening, straight after dinner, you went off to the Penguin Parade, and not only yeah. did you go to the parade, you experienced Penguins Plus. Yeah. Tell me about that. Incredible. Yeah. That, yeah. that was one of the highlights, I think. That's it, yeah. For me. Definitely. Yeah, would you say? Yeah. So, what were the differences sure. between Penguin Plus and what? what, what so, you are in a different angle, sort of in a different area. Okay. Um, you've got like your separate viewing platform with a few different levels, so you can go up or down. You've also got the experience, so you can go sort of underground and see yeah. them close up, walking sort of Literally right next to your eyes. That was our little bit of an extra, extra sneaky. Yeah. Um, we sneaky saw some of them trying to get, get up ho, didn't we, up like the hill? <laughs> but they couldn't. Do it, yeah. Well. And, and then some of, them, the top. Yeah, some of them are a bit bigger than others, so they yeah. sort of fall apart. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've been at sea eating for a little bit too long. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, they had a belly full of fish, I know what it's like yeah. when you pull it back. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's not fish. <laughs> but to get to see them in like a natural habitat like that, compared to like a zoo experience, yeah. which yeah. all I would have done before, was fantastic. And to see that many mm. yeah. as well. I like the yeah. walks that you got to, as you walk down towards the penguins yeah. before, we got to see wallabies and like an added sort of bonus of yeah. wildlife on the way down yeah. there as well, so it's great. Yeah. And it's so well it's done, isn't it, it, as well? It's, yeah. it's, it's, you don't feel like it's a tourist attraction, you no, feel like you're really natural. at one. Yes. Yeah nature and the conservation and yeah. Yeah. it's Action. almost a, as if it's a natural phenomenon yeah. so yeah. Absolutely. And they've, they've built the, the reserve around around, 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 around the penguins yes. we fit with the penguins yes. yeah definitely yeah. and how knowledgeable were the staff there as well yeah. really, really knowledgeable. you yeah. learned so much about what was actually what we were seeing and experiencing and at the time yeah, yeah. definitely it's fabulous. They actually call the Phillip Island Penguin Parade the longest running show on earth because they've got photographs, these old black and white photographs mm -hmm. of people lying on the beach watching the penguins, dated around 1924, wow. as I understand. So it's been going for a long time. And Phillip Island is also known as the zoo of the future because it's the, uh, the animals are in their natural habitat and it's us that are restricted. So the, we can enjoy the animals at uh, very close range without destroying them or their natural habitats. So it certainly is a great experience. Yeah. Thanks so much for telling yeah. us about Phillip Island. Thank you. So next we went down to Wilson's Promontory and once again we've changed our panel. Who have we got this time? So obviously we've got Karen and Nick up front but then we've also been joined by the lovely Elaine and we have got Alice there as well for us. <laughs> Give us a wave girls. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. So we went a little bit further south. In fact, we went down to the southernmost tip of mainland Australia, and that's Wilson's Promontory National Park. What do you think of this national park? Just beautiful, serene, natural beauty around you. The colours were amazing. Just so quiet and peaceful. Amazing. It genuinely feels like you're going back in time going yeah. there as well. There's no real sort of infrastructure in terms of hotels or anything like that, it's just pure national park, deserted beaches, it's wildlife, it's great. Completely free. Yeah. Completely now speaking free. of the wildlife, there's lots of wildlife down at Wilson Promontory and we're only there for like an hour and a half and it's amazing how much wildlife we saw, but we didn't get to see a wombat on this occasion and I've been copying it all trip for that, despite all the other wildlife we did see, like the kangaroos and all the lorikeets and so forth. What do yeah. you think of the wildlife that you saw there? Very diverse. Um, it's something there for everybody. Um, whether you're into wildlife or walking, it was it was just just fantastic. Um, families and 
what I liked about it was it's accessible to young families, maybe with buggies and pushchairs, yeah. and little kids on trikes, as well as the disabled as well. And all the pathways and boardwalks were really? wide enough and, and, and well maintained for everybody to be able to access it. Absolutely, and when you saw all the birds and all the all of the sort of that sort of nature there, they were like rainbows flying yeah, across the sky, yeah. and that to us obviously is sounds, so different. The sounds of yeah. all the different birds, and, and it, you might not have seen them, but you could certainly hear them. Definitely. And I'll be with you, Paul. Every time I've been there before, I've seen wombats as well. So, um, you know, we just happened to have one of those days where the wombats weren't, weren't there. But... Just bragging, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just to prove the point, here's some footage of me with a wombat at Wilson's Prom. <laughs> this was great, this little one. I mean, they're, they're used to people being around. You can see them, you can feel them and touch them. And our bus driver from Bunyip Tours, who are just absolutely awesome, Kyle, well, at least he was a bus driver for half the trip. Here's some footage of Kyle at the same location. So one of the things I love most about Wilson's Promontory is experiences like this. Look at how close you can get to these animals right here at Wilson's Prom and Bunyip Tours will take you there. So there's just the proof for everybody that was on this for Mill that there are indeed wombats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so from there, we jumped back in the beautiful Bunyip Tours bus and we made our way up to the lake's entrance region. And we did so much great activity there, but one thing I think was a highlight for me, and I think a highlight for oh, you, definitely. was the dinner that we had at the country yeah, house and yeah. all the locals that joined yeah. us. Do you want to take us through that experience? We, it, it was a great evening. I mean, we all stayed in three different properties, but we all met at Country House. And, and you know, when we turned up, I think I think we were the last group to, to arrive. You know, the fire pit was going. Some of the girls were sat around there. Um, people were drinking wine on the veranda, and the pizza oven was all lit. And and a huge great big table outside was all set up with pizzas and wines. And you know, it was just a real family get together farm next door, um, we promised wombats and we went <laughs> wombats, oh, no. but we ended up stargazing, so what else could you have? It was... Did you did search for a wombat. Yeah, we? we did. By yeah. torchlight. Have yeah. a look. And pick, yeah. you up, pick you up on the stargazing, yeah. how good are the stars? Uh, so close. You think you, you're in them? The Southern Cross, which obviously yeah. we've, I've never seen before, and the galaxy there was there. The, you've got yeah. the Milky Way, and it is yeah. so clear with no light pollution. There's no light pollution at all. It really is just. It's good to have the owners of the property also showing us what we're looking yeah. at with the Southern Cross as well and looking at So it's personal like and yeah. you feel like part of the family and I think that's one thing that struck me about the hospitality wherever we've been on this trip that <coughs> everybody has been so so lovely and it doesn't matter if we're on a fan trip it's just people are generally lovely and want to tell you about their amazing country. They're very generous, um, even the, even down to the, the wine producers that supplied all the wine for the evening. You know, the local wine. Oh yeah, oh. so generous. I'm a fan of Chardonnay yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> so it certainly was a great dinner at the country house, but uh, earlier in the day we went to Raymond Island and what did we see there? Koalas. <laughs> <laughs> I promised koalas and I delivered koalas. Yeah, they were there. After some time of searching, they were there and we had the best Best information from Carl on koala habitat and activities and traits and it's quite, it's quite a unique Victorian situation in terms of that you get a, a from Painesville a beautiful little fishing town you get a free ferry it's absolutely yeah. free you get on that it takes you over to Raymond Island and then you do the koala walk round and um, they're just absolutely everywhere up the trees and, and it, as well and it so. costs nothing costs absolutely nothing so it's, it's one of the, it's one of the top koala spotting places in, in in australia actually so it's a good spot to go certainly is a great spot to do that so then the next day 90 mile beach how did you find that brilliant the sand was soft to come up through your toes and wide long beach but isn't it not 90 miles anymore it's so I, I, I heard that so gps <laughs> gps had said it's more like 110 miles but we're certainly not changing it to 110 mile beach so still 90 mile beach to us yeah it's and beautiful. we didn't fancy walking it no, no. We walk it. no. And what, what about our hashtag check that out hashtag gmsmt if you follow that you'll see so many great images like this one talk about the party crew 
on the beach. No, no problem posing for these photos at all. But uh, I think not... that, that 90 mile beach kind of sums up what Gippsland's all about. You know, uh, Victoria as a state is a very compact state in, in Australia terms, but at the same time, Gippsland's the size of Switzerland. So um, it seems quite big on European standards, but um, there's so much to see there. So a 90 mile beach um, there is, is yeah. seems like a, a and so place. diverse. Everything from rolling, what we would say, rolling sort of country hills through to coastal ferns that are almost sort of Jurassic, and then the most beautiful beachland. It's fabulous. Nice town as well, Lex Entrance. You know, as you drive down through into it, it was just the way it's set out. It's all sort of quaint, yeah, free, um, and peaceful. Yeah. Very much really so. peaceful. Lovely. Speaking of really peaceful, then we got back on the bus. Well, on the bus wasn't really peaceful, but when we got off the bus, it certainly was, because the next stop was a beautiful location. Um, just before you get to the end of uh, Far East Victoria and cross the border into New South Wales, and that's Gypsy Point. What a beautiful area. We've got this great flyover when we uh, had uh, our bus driver, Kyle, got his drone out and flew over. Tell us about Gypsy Point. How beautiful did you find that? Again, just another natural nature retreat. Um, Tom's a huge character in the place. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. A real charmer. Absolutely. A real charmer. And all his stories he had from when the property at Gypsy Point has been, it was how it's developed yeah. as as the, the properties developed and as times developed, from the kangaroos at the bar when they used to yeah. come in and you know, all those wild all kangaroos fish, around there. All his fish that he's called the fish mounted yeah. on the walls. Definitely. Yeah, he's got a real passion for the place and still has. And the gardens, anybody that's into mm, sort of fauna and flowers and gardening, yeah. it really has been landscaped so so well. So you each prop each unit has got its own little separate bit of garden, its own vista over the lake as well. That's it, and they said as well, you know, the, the climate there, it's in its kind of own with their protected area, it's kind of like a microclimate, yeah. a little bit warmer, so, you know, even if you come in wintertime, then you've got a good chance of having a bit more sort of mild weather, so it's good. So then after that, we, uh, we crossed the border and went into New South Wales, so it's time to ditch Nick and look at our next panel. Who we oh, and look at the delightful Claire there and Georgina, they've joined us now in the hot seats. Fantastic, so we crossed the border. We went up to a little town in southern New South Wales called Pambula, and who did we meet? We met Captain Sponge. <laughs> <laughs> that was Captain Sponge. He was a bit of character, he was. <laughs> yeah, he was. Wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, great guy. Absolutely full of knowledge. Um, oyster tour, and it was uh, absolutely fascinating to see the insight of um, what's behind oyster farming. Yeah. Um, but he was he was quite a character, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't your usual kind of host, was he? So we had a really good spin on it where it was, it yeah. wasn't, even though it was educational, it felt more like you were with a friend on a boat and he was like, this is what I do. And it, you know, it was really exciting. And uh, yeah, we learned a lot, I think, didn't we? We did, even to the point that he bought his flags from eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Now, you've never tried an oyster before, Elaine, have you? No, definitely not. I think we've got some footage of you here that we might just uh, check out where you're actually trying an oyster. So here we go. Take us through this process as you're watching the video there on the screen. Well, this was sort of my own personal bush took a trial, really. Um, it was just the, the thought of it was going through my mind <laughs> and my gag reflex, I think, was totally closed off. And then I touched it and it moved. <laughs> and then I had to obviously put it in my mouth. Which you did, eventually. Yeah, yeah you got there. I did. Oh dear, here we go. And then it just got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> For quite a long time. But once you swallowed it, you, you got there, you're almost there. I did, I did, yeah. And we're looking for the evidence that it's actually swallowed. Yeah, and... It's coming. Oh no, maybe no, not. No, no, maybe no, not. No, no, no. It's still going. Still going. Still going. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and the beauty of that is you can just throw the oysters over the side, which is great. Now, Alice, for you it's a little bit different with the oysters. You actually like them. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to have them a few times before, and you know I do really enjoy them. Um, I must say, SpongeBob, oh, sorry, sponges were the best. <laughs> SpongeBob. One of the best ones I've had, but still, um, oysters are good. 
Well, let's have a look at the footage of you just to see how much you enjoy. Look at the big smiley face there. Shut off the oyster. That's pretty cool. And it's straight down the hatch. And how quick did you swallow it? Oh, that, 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 was pretty, that was pretty cool. But I think there was one moment there I detected a slight little bit of hesitation. Have a look at this freeze frame here. Now, that doesn't quite look like you're there. So you really enjoyed it, but you did have that little yeah, moment no, of hesitation, didn't you? Great, still of me there. But, um, <laughs> no, they don't look like the most attractive thing in the world to eat, if we're being honest. And there's always that. Yeah, so that's what the, that's about. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Sponge. <laughs> <laughs> speaking, speaking of eating, dinner that night at the Wharf restaurant, how was that? Oh, it was delicious. That wasn't was it? great. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was lovely. It was um, great ambience to meet up with the local suppliers as well. And um, well, the sunset. The sunset oh, was yes. just fabulous. Right over the whole bay. And yeah. the good thing is, depending on the time of year you go, it's often well during whale season. You know, just filled with them in the bay there as well, which is, must be amazing to see. But it wasn't just a restaurant, was it? It, it, it was everything. It was an aquarium underneath <laughs> as well, which was great to go down and see all the fish and things and have people like. Obviously, uh, Rob, I think was his yes, name. Yes, Rob was there. Yeah. 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 So, um, to take us round and explain about all the different fish and things like that, and the hermit crab. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Yeah. And then, and then the next morning, we had a special treat. We didn't tell anyone what we do. We just said, "Be ready 15 minutes early." And then we pulled into this driveway, and you got off the bus. And what did you do? Squeal. <laughs> With the light, I have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it was the best surprise, so thank you so, so thank much for all yeah, of those. Um, but yeah, we saw the roos, didn't we? Yeah, we got to give breakfast to the kangaroos, yeah. and there were some joeys, there were just so many of them, weren't there, that just yeah. kept out. Uh, the mum with the joey oh, yeah, so out. He popped his head out. There's Clay there looking at the. Uh, how close is that? What'd that feel like, Clay, when you were in that? So close. Amazing. They're just so. You know, we don't see anything like that back home. It's, to see them up close and personal is yeah. quite something special. And of course, these are wild animals yeah. as well, and they're you know they're being fed on the correct kangaroo food and so forth as well. But at the end of the day, they are wild animals yeah. and free to come and go as they please. Yeah, and they do jump pretty quick when they want to. <laughs> <laughs> it was such an natural habitat yeah. as well. Yeah. You're in a forest area, yeah. and it, it just seems so right to be there. Yeah. It was lovely. They want to be there. Yeah. 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 I think the great thing with this hotel is as well because the kangaroos are that used to human interaction. Often if you stay and you'll be having breakfast on your own deck and you know you get handed your own feed when you check in and they can just come over and have oh, breakfast yeah. with you. Yeah definitely. I think they said they had some great shots from Christmas Day yeah. there when everyone's enjoying Christmas dinner together, humans and rooms. And just when you thought the kangaroo experience couldn't get any better, oh, a little did. bit up the road, <laughs> did it get better? Yes. Oh. How did we improve on that then? We went to visit um, a wilderness lo eco lodge and uh, we were greeted by two kangaroos in a shopping bag. <laughs> a bag for life. A bag for life. It was a kangaroo for life. We could have took it home. We could have on the bus. <laughs> yeah, little joeys in little bags. And, uh, yeah. She just revealed them, sat down, revealed this little joey coming out of the bag. Yeah, it was just delightful. 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 And they even came on the bus with us for, for a short time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you thought we were keeping him at that point. Look at, look at this delayed sitting out the front of the bus there. Just oh, awesome. Just mad. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, just absolutely gorgeous. Next, we went a little bit further up the New South Wales south coast to the Batemans Bay area. We've done a bit of a spot with our panel, but you've met everybody here. But this time in the hot seat, we've got Claire and Georgina. So, tell us about, uh, let's say, Tilba Cheeses and the town of Tilba. How would you find that? Oh, it was charming. It was a village that felt very familiar. Uh, if you've ever been to Cornwall and Devon, uh, that seaside rural, well, seaside town which has lots and lots of heritage. Um, as we walked along this sort of, well, it was basically a one-horse town sort of feel about it. Um, and we saw lots of photographs from past days, 100 years ago, how it started, how it was formed, how it developed, and that really, you know, sort of community feel about it, and fabulous shops. Just, the just, oldie shop, oh, yeah, the shops. The jewellery shop was to die for all these beautiful, <laughs> yeah, I mean the colours of Australia, the ocean, the sky, yeah. uh, they made jewellery, silver jewellery with, um, well I'm going back basically. <laughs> And then it was time to get some more awesome, awesome viewing from high above in a seaplane. Oh, yes. Describe that experience for me. Wow. 
it was uh, yeah Tim took us up there um, and uh, we uh, went from the jetty had lunch you could have lunch at the jetty and then you went on to this boardwalk pelicans in the in the ocean uh, as you stepped on onto the plane and uh, fully strapped in with safety checks and so on and then you took off gracefully into the sky slipped into the sky and wow what an amazing I think we were up there for about an hour and a quarter yeah. or something. Yeah, and it just, went. just wasn't enough though. It never feels enough when you're up in no. the sky. And they're so gentle the way they fly around. That's amazing. And, yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Smooth. And Tim Gilbo and Graham, you yeah. know, they're, they're great pilots. Great. They look after you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Speaking of being looked after, the next adventure was Josh oh. and, uh, and Tom, the kayak team. The kayak team. And Claire, you and a couple of others were a little bit nervous about the kayaks, but you yeah. mastered it, didn't you? Nervous, it's a bit of a statement. I was truly <laughs> terrified. Kayaks and me are not friends. Um, and yes, I overcome a huge hurdle there. Um, they were great. Josh and Tom took us through an instruction for a few minutes and they very patiently got me into the kayak. Um, I, one of them sat behind me, Tom. He was again very patient and I was surprised at how stable and calm it was, and I was really proud of myself. <laughs> you should have been too. There's quite a few of you should be very proud of yourself. Yeah. I was coming back, yeah. I was going out, and uh, yeah. we went, went up to see the, um, the beast beds of the, the oyster farm, so that was really you know, brilliant. And we saw the osprey next, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Well, we've got some um, Alison next sitting behind you again because uh, we've worked out that Nick's got a particular way of, of uh, how you should navigate in the kayaks. So, uh, Nick, is this very fair, Alice? What do you think about this? Well, that's that's how Alice told me to do it. You know? she no, said, it isn't. I said I got tricked into doing this before, and you just did it again to me this time. Well, I, you know, I personally thought that we were in New South Wales. You know, I'm with Visit Victoria, and I thought I'm off duty now. I'm going to relax and enjoy it. So that's what yeah. happened. We did beat everybody in races, though. We did, yeah. And we crashed into Italy oh. and Dutch. <laughs> We got in trouble for that. <laughs> um, they definitely don't have a kayak license, so let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Alright, so now we move a little bit further north again on the south coast, and this time we get to uh, the beautiful Jervis Bay. And we've changed our panel again, so we, who have we got this we time? We have indeed. We've got the lovely Gemma up here, and we've got Elaine back in. To <laughs> <laughs> and there's no music playing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Jervis Bay. Um, um, did I guarantee you'd see dolphins? You did, and we did I see didn't, them. I didn't until you saw them. <laughs> <laughs> I was clever this time. How did you enjoy the dolphin cruise? It was really good. It was really good. See them up close as well. I didn't think we'd see them at first, so I was quite surprised. And it's not, it's not when they first yeah. came out, but when they got a bit more comfortable with the boat, and they were sort of literally right there over yeah. the bow. Oh, they were yeah. confident. <laughs> yeah, how was that experience? Have you um, been that close before, ever? No, no, that was first time for me. First time for me as well. To see them swimming, I've swum with them, but um, to see them actually in the wild was the first time, so that's one uh, bucket list ticked off. Again, playing with the boat, right. interacting with humans, incredible. but because they want to be there, yeah. there's, no, there's nothing forced about it at all. They just want to come and have a little look when they turn on the side and give you a wink. And see the mom and the baby and the calf and, you know, just playing together and feeding and going from one side of the boat to the other was people spotting them the staff on board were just fantastic oh they were um, so knowledgeable really good yeah and what do you think of the town of huskisson and jervis bay in terms of its clarity and how crystal clear the water is oh, it was so beautiful the water was turquoise the sun was really white so it's beautiful. um got some of the whitest suns in the world doesn't it there as documented in the guinness book of world records mm -hmm. i might add <laughs> well, that's a fabulous destination. We're so pleased that you got to enjoy Jervis Bay and stay here for a moment because tomorrow we've still got a day to explore Sydney and first thing in the morning we're going to do the absolutely amazing bridge climb. Wow. Are you looking forward to that? Absolutely. Yes. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> we're excited, ladies. Oh, Just yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a bucket list to tick. <laughs> yeah, it should be absolutely awesome. We might also get to uh, check out at least another one of the hotels in Sydney, the Shangri-La as well. So we're certainly looking forward to that. 
So thank you very much for your time. It's been fantastic talking to you. And one of the other people we need to say a big thank you to is Bunyip Tours. Definitely. And we have Kyle from Bunyip Tours, and we also have Anthony who's uh, helped us out all this trip, collecting so many great photos and videos and so forth as well. How have you enjoyed travelling with these two guys? Oh, well, they've definitely been characters, that's for oh, sure. Really? But without them, the experience would have been totally different. So no knowledgeable. I know that the guys have had a whale of a time with you. So so thank you very, very much for... Oh, it's been awesome this. travelling with you guys as well. It's always fun when you have a group that wants to learn about Australia and wants to learn about these, all these different places, these amazing places we visit too, yeah. so that's great. And many of them are first time visitors to Australia. It's their first ever trip to Australia, so yeah, I'm so glad sure. we showed them a, a part of Australia that we're proud of to um, show off. Absolutely. Definitely. Excellent. Now, Kyle, we had George from running up tours for the first couple of days. And George has been in market quite a few times, so a lot awesome. of people know George, the boss man, as you call it. And then we did a little bit of a swap down at Wilson's Prom and we had yourself. What, what, what makes Bunyip Tours such a great tour company? Well, the fact that we're an environmentally focused company, first of all, so everything on all of our tours is basically something about the environment. So it's, it's all learning about this amazing environment we have in Australia, the culture of Australia, the habitats and the places we go are always awesome and so much fun. And you're so passionate about it as well. It <laughs> makes it so much of a difference as well. We do try. <laughs> and the knowledge um, a car like himself or the guys got it's just amazing. Like there's so many things I've learned on this trip that um, I, I thought I I didn't know that existed. So uh, every time I go on this trip with finding tours I learn something new despite how many times I've been there during the trip, so it's fantastic, so. I've got to say, you know, Kyle gave us a lot of tips and advice, some of it I would love to uh, remember for a long, long time, and there's a few other things he told us about. <laughs> 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 and anyway, you can find out about those sorts of things is to come on a familiar with Bunyip Tours. Exactly. <laughs> Sydney, Ooh. Melbourne touring. You've heard of what goes on the road, stays on Facebook. <laughs> we'll, keep, we'll keep a few of those things a bit of a secret, all right? We've got to keep it. some secrets, exactly. <laughs> would you all put your hands together for Bunyip Tours? really wraps up our, uh, our little video presentation and highlights of what's been an awesome trip between Sydney and Melbourne on the Sydney Melbourne Coastal Drive. I've got to say Sydney Melbourne Touring enjoys many partnerships around the world but in the UK we're delighted to have such a great relationship with Gold Medal and having uh, their knowledge and their continued support has been awesome. <laughs> having these <laughs> to Louisa. Oh well I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you, Paul, Anthony, Carl and also Nick and all of the amazing uh, ladies, the Sheila's on tour. Thank you so much for the most amazing trip ever and experience and yeah just fabulous.